Welcome back to another Monster Hunter World tutorial. Today we are going to talk about the Switch Axe. This is a very fun weapon to use if you can learn how to morph it correctly and keep up with its gauge efficiency. So the first thing to note is that this actually has an Axe mode and a Sword mode. Um, sword mode is going to be a heavier variant and the Axe mode is going to be a lot more mobile. And so with those two modes the damage is going to vary. However, you will notice under the sharpness that we have a gauge. The inner gauge is that blue line, and that is going to be charged by our axe mode. The outer gauge that is currently grayed out is going to be charged by using our sword mode, and then it is going to empower our sword mode. So let's get into our Y attacks. So first off, we have an advancing forward slash, overhead, side, rising, and repeat. And if you want to throw that advancing slash back in there whilst you're doing your Y combos, you can actually hit forward and B, and it will throw it back in there. This rising slash is an attack that will knock your teammates out into the air, so do be careful of that. It is worth mentioning that you can also Y B for the exact same attack if you are standing still. Let's go ahead and talk about our wild swing. This is going to be an attack that is using stamina with every hit, but it is also doing a decent amount of damage, and we can hit quite a few times. And from here, after about three hits, we will get an audio cue and a silhouette flash. Right there. After we get that, we can go from this overhead slash into a much stronger overhead slam. That is actually going to charge our gauge on the bottom. So if you look at our gauge, that's actually going to empower it just a tiny bit, which is going to make the sword mode hit for an extra tick of damage every time we hit. With that being said, we have max ammo or inner gauge. So let's go ahead and go into sword mode. Now that we're in sword mode, it is much like a great sword, but a little bit more mobile. You move the same speed, the stance is similar, but the attacks are a lot quicker. So let's go ahead and talk about our Y attacks. So as you can see, as we're hitting, we're gonna chain these same attacks and it is going to drain our inner gauge while simultaneously building our outer gauge. So let's talk about our inner gauge really quick. Our inner gauge is going to be recharged by using our YB attacks and stuff in our axe mode. So this is going to be something that we can, I'm going to refer to it as ammo for the rest of this. So to charge our ammo, again, just YB attacks, and then we can go into sword mode and charge up the rest of our gauge. So we have our Y attacks out of the way. Let's go ahead and talk about our B attacks. This is going to fill up the gauge the most, and it's going to be double slash. And this Heavenward Flurry is going to be a lot stronger. That is going to be the second attack of Heavenward Flurry is going to build a gauge up a significant amount. So you notice with our bottom gauge charge, we're actually doing a second tick of damage for every hit, no matter what hit it is. And you notice I am now out of ammo. That means I am forced to go back into axe mode. To manually go back into sword mode, you will have to try to morph and it will actually reload it for you and then you will be able to morph. Alternatively, being able to keep good gauge efficiency, as I had mentioned before, you'll have to switch between axe and sword mode pretty often to ensure that your ammo is full and you are building your gauge. Now there's quite a few different ways to do this and that is part of what makes this weapon so cool. So as you'll notice, there are a lot of different ways that you can morph from both sword to axe and axe to sword. One of the cooler ones that you can do is start a wild swing, go ahead and empower yourself with a heavy slam, and then you can jump right back into it and this transition is going to do a little bit more damage. You're going to hit trigger in the wild swing and it is going to throw you into your sword mode with a few extra hits. So let's talk about our elemental discharge. So our YB attack in axe mode is going to be our rising slash. Again, that can hit friendlies into the air, so do be careful. And then once our gauge, our outer gauge is full, we can now hit YB in our sword mode to do an elemental discharge. I am going to be spamming Y here to make sure that this attack keeps up. And you notice part of the gauge is now gone. So I'm gonna refill that really quick. I don't quite need to waste a bunch of ammo to hit that last little bit. And you'll notice that it is now blinking, it flashed, and it is full. 
So here we have elemental discharge. If you do not spam Y or your attack button, it is not going to do anything. So make sure that you are spamming Y to do a finisher. Alternatively, there is a zero sum finisher. That is an elemental discharge that you will use and it will attach it to the monster and it'll do the exact same thing just on that part of the monster. Alternatively, you can grapple and then hit YB and it will start a zero sum discharge on its own. Again, make sure to play with both sword and axe and keep your ammo and your gauge full. Having good gauge efficiency is a very big part of this weapon and it will make things a lot easier if you learn to use it and be gauge efficient. Building ammo is going to be pretty important for this, especially if you want to do zero sums, which is going to be a huge damage output for this weapon. So let's get into those. So this weapon is a heavy weapon, so it is actually going to tenderize when you are attacking on the side of the monster. And now let's talk about zero summing. So again, let's just build up really quick. This is actually going to be the strategy that I use for Fatalis because you want to be able to break Fatalis' horns, and by zero summing, you can hit his head a lot. So what we're going to do is we're going to grapple to wherever we want, and we're just going to hit YB now, and again, we're going to want to hit Y the entire time we're doing this, and it is going to knock us off, but it is going to do a discharge finisher. So, with that in mind, we can now do it probably up to three times if you start as soon as you max out your gauge and then just go until the gauge is empty. A very good way to make sure you're doing this consistently, especially for Fatalis where every attack is going to knock you off and be super annoying, is to run Rock Speed Mantle or Temporal with this so you are not getting knocked off by every attack because you can get knocked off in the middle of your zero sums and it feels like a waste. So that's about it for switch axe. Make sure to use your wild swing overhead slam to get a little buff and then keep your efficiency good. Build your gauge and get right into zero summing the monster because it will be a lot of damage. I haven't played around with switch axe enough to know if this is true in this game. But in the old game, using your elemental discharge, the final blast will knock teammates away, so do be careful of that as well. Let's go ahead and look at some of the skills. Now, I usually don't throw in general offensive skills, but since this weapon does not use a ton of stamina for its attacks, using maximum might might actually be a very good option for this. It is a secret, so you are going to have level 4 and 5 hidden behind a set bonus, but it increases your affinity, which is your critical chance, by 30% whenever your stamina is full for a long period of time. At level 5, this will be 40% and it will activate as soon as the gauge is full. The only other skill that I really recommend for this weapon is going to be Focus. This is going to increase our gauge fill rate by up to 20% at level 3. This is going to make our gauge efficiency a little bit better by making sure that we can keep our gauge filled because it does take a long time to fill it and it is very hard to do so on some monsters that jump around a lot, for instance a Kirin. If you are not going to run Rocksteady Mantle, which has inherent earplugs, the earplug skill might be worth looking into just for that extra comfortability in zero summing. Let's go ahead and then look at the Furious set. This is going to be the two piece that we're looking at. This is going to increase our maximum might skill level up to level five. Again, this is going to be really helpful if you aren't using a switch axe because you're not really using a ton of stamina. And again, Maximum Might Secret is on the Glavinous sets and the Acidic Glavinous sets. With all that, let's go ahead and look at some gameplay.